how to run flux ai image generation locally and we recently learned how to create your own model which is a lora fine tuning of flux so in this video i'm going to show you one how to run flux model locally and then two we are going to also learn second part of our previous video which is after you have trained the lora how you can load it and then create it locally in my case i don't have an nvidia gpu i just have got a mac so this tutorial works perfectly fine on mac in case if it doesn't work on your computer my apologies but we are going to use a tool called pinocchio for this go to pinocchio.computer so once you go to pinocchio.computer you would see this install run control ai apps on your computer with one click all you have to do is a download and install it it is a very straightforward process and all you have to do is a download and install it once you have successfully downloaded and installed it you would get a ui like this i'll go to the home and then show you how does it look so you would see something like this in which you will not have any application so for the first time you will not have any application so you can click discover and inside discover you would see something called comfy ui so comfy ui is the software or the system or the ui that we are going to use to run flux so comfy ui is a very node based interface there are multiple ways for you to do flux so there is one you can see that flux web ui is there but with comfy ui you can do a lot more things and there are a lot of people sharing comfy ui workflow nodes which you can easily import it and then also use a lot of different things so the thing is you have to go click comfy ui once you click comfy ui you would see this download button and then you can download it after you have downloaded for the first time very first time open comfy ui and then it will download the flux models because the flux schnell fp18 the floating point precision 8 model the flux schnell fp8 model is the default inside comfy ui in my case i already have got downloaded this so i'm going to open this but for the very first time, just to quickly remind again, you would not have these things. Once you install Pinocchio computer, go click discover. And after you click discover, you would see a lot of different workflows or softwares. All you have to do is click comfy UI. Once you click comfy UI, click download. This will download comfy UI. And then after you open comfy UI for the first time, it will download the flux Schnell FP8 model, which is the default model. In my case, it is already there. So I'm going to click Comfy UI. And after I click Comfy UI, as you can see here, my Comfy UI is getting started. After it gets started, I would, uh, you would probably have something like this, uh, probably a very small change of this. So as you can see here, in my case, there are like a bunch of nodes. One is like a load checkpoint. The second one is a load LoRa. The third one is clip text encode. Then other one is clip text encode again. And then you have got the empty latent image and then you have got the K sampler and then you have got VAE stands for variable auto encoder decode and then save image. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to re load the default one like very first time when you load what does it happen. So this one is with LoRa we will come back to this one later on. I'm going to just show the default workflow. So what does the default workflow look like this one you load the checkpoint then you have got uh, the the positive prompt which is what you want inside your image like you want the image to be based on this this is your negative prompt which you don't want on the image so you can see here so if i move this you can actually see the clip getting connected here the model going to here so you can see all these things but this is not a comfy ui tutorial so i'm not going to go deep into it but just for your understanding you've got the clip coming here and then this going into the negative prompt so basically your positive prompt your negative prompt what is the size of the image that you want to create i'm going ahead with 512 by 512 but if you want larger size image you can go with larger size image you want more than one image you can go with a larger batch size another important thing here is that inside your case sampler if you see the sampler we are using a euler sampler you can play with different kinds of samplers the very important thing here is if you want to reproduce the same image again and again and again set the value seed value that you would like so in my case i'm not going to create the same image again and again so i'm going to just leave it as it is then change the cfg which is uh, i think conditional generation um, uh, um the classifier based conditional generation, something like that so sorry it's called classifier free guidance my bad so you have got 
a value eight here by default, set this to be one and you can play around with it. And you can just go ahead with like two, three steps to start with. I'm going to go with two because I want to generate it quickly. And I'm going to go ahead with the existing prompt, beautiful scenery, na nature, glass bottle, landscape, purple galaxy bottle. And as you can see here, I've uh, already loaded the model or the default workflow has loaded the model flux one Chanel FP eight safe tensors. Now we'll see later on where this model is and what to do with that model. If you were to add new model now, after everything is done, as you can see here, everything is set for us. Click Q prompt. Once you click Q prompt, you can see the Q size one. And if you go to view Q, you would see the Q here. So as you can see here, it is starting to generate what you want. And how do you know that the green color highlight that you see here indicates that the generation is started. In fact, you can go click terminal here and then it will start showing you what kind of progress is happening. For example, it is loading a model and it is loading all the required models. Like there are like a bunch of models, like one is the VAE, one is the clip model and you've got, um, I think the base one. So it will load the models. Then you would see like what are all models that it is loading. And once everything is done, you would start seeing that this is going to move. So you can always click open web UI and then see where it is. So loaded the model is done. Prompt has been taken. Now it is under generation here. So case sampler is where the generation is going to happen. So you're going to quickly see a progress bar here that will basically indicate how much time it is going to take on my Mac, which has got approximate I think 36 GB of memory. It's an M3 max. So it's specifically for a graphics and all the other things. Here, it, I think it took me like two minutes or something uh, to generate one image. And uh, on your computer, if you have got an NVIDIA based computer, it might be faster. If you have got non NVIDIA based computer, in fact, like a Mac, which does not have 36 GB of memory, this might be further slow. So it's, it's, it depends upon your computer. Um, and uh, here you can see the loading has been already completed. And as you can see here, it says zero slash two which indicates the in the value that we gave, like the number of steps that we want to do. And then it is going to start generating. So the progress bar is going to load. Once it is completely done, you will see the final image here. While it is getting generated, I would like to quickly show you where the files are. So if you go to files here, you would see all the files here. Click view folder here. And once you click view folder here, you would basically see the settings file, the configuration file. But that is not where your all the files are there. So for example, if you want to see model files, all those things, where are they? You can go to Pinocchio and once you go to Pinocchio, you would see something called drive. And after you go to drive, click drives and peers and the only folder that you have got there. And this is where the magic happens. So inside this, so you can see that you have got a folder called checkpoints. You've got a folder called Loras. And this is basically where you have to put everything. For example, tomorrow you want to do control net, put all your control net models inside this, the checkpoint that we are currently using the flux one Chanel FP eight dot safe tensors. You add it here. If you want to add a different checkpoint, like there is a GGUF checkpoint that I'm planning to try, or you've got an Nvidia computer where you don't even need FP eight. You can go with FP 16. Then you can put those checkpoints, whatever the base flux model, whether the flux one Chanel, or the flex one dev, you can add it here. I've got this folder output inside output. I've got the flux train replicate and inside that I've got two files config YAML and Lora safe tensors. What you have to do is you have to take those two files and go inside the Lora's and put that here. So this is essential for you to generate image with Lora. So what we are doing currently is just blanket generation, no Lora, nothing. But in the next one, I'm going to show you with Lora where you have to do this thing. This is very mandatory because from comfy UI, you will not have any place to load the Lora. So you have to put this inside here. Otherwise comfy UI will not recognize your Lora. Keep that in mind. I hope this is clear. If it is not clear, you can always rewind and see back. So now I'm going to go back and open the web UI. And then as you can see here, our image is generated. The, not only the image gets generated here, but the, also the image gets stored in your um, current folder, wherever you have got this with the prefix, the file name prefix of comfy UI. So that means you can start using it. Even here you can like open the image and do all those things, but you can basically load the image from there also. So uh, just for two steps, it's an excellent image. Uh, trust me, we just did two steps. 
with stable diffusion we used to do 20 steps um, and with more number of steps you always get like better image but this is an excellent image just to repeat again download pinocchio after you download pinocchio download comfy ui after you do download comfy ui for the very first time download the flux one Schnell fp8 models which is the default checkpoint for comfy ui and after you do that all you have to do is uh, open this comfy ui with open web ui and then go here and change the number of steps very less and also the cfg classifier free guidance to 1.0 even you can play with this uh, depending upon what you want and then just click q prompt and that will generate the image and also save the image now we are entering into the second part of the video where i'm going to show you how to use the lora that you just created using the first video so i published a video yesterday based on that you would you would have learned how to create your own model like if you have got a own model i created a model called danush which is based on a south indian actor so i'm going to show you how to load danush and then do certain things that you want to do so i'm going to just like load default so that we start fresh so this is how it looks fresh what i'm going to do is i'm going to just like move this node here and then i'm going to right click here and then say add a node and loader is what i want to add because i want a lora loader and click load lora after i have it as you can see here in my lora widget here the node you can see the lora safe tensors already and that exists only because i've got this files here so if i don't have this here like for example if i have deleted this here um, i should delete it maybe not a good idea if i deleted this here and restart it it will not be there if i refresh this it is undefined that is primarily because it loads from here there is no way for you to go here and then load the file you have to make sure it is inside the lores folder which i was saying go to the home folder of yours go to pinocchio go to drive drives and then find the the loras and then do it to refresh it again this time it is going to ideally show us yeah hopefully it does next once you have this node added now take this one from model to go to this model take this one clip and go to this clip now take this model and uh, sorry let's go take the clip and go to the clip take the clip and go to the negative clip but still model is directly going there so we want to avoid that so we want to take the k sampler and take this model and send the model so VAE goes directly there and uh, you have got the model going through LoRa and uh, the clip going through the clip positive encode positive prompt and also the negative prompt. Now how do we ensure that this is working fine? It's very simple. All we have to do is we have to use our invoke command. In my case it was Danush. If you have not seen my first video I would strongly encourage you to see it. For LoRa, you always have a token that is invoking token. So I'm going to use that token and then create this. So I'm going to say photo of angry, maybe Danush, Danush um, as, a, as a green hulk, maybe, I don't know, as a green hulk. Okay, cool. So I've, uh, got, I've not added anything in the negative prompt. And once again, go back here, change the number of steps to maybe like two. The quality is going to be terrible, um, we know for sure, because we are just doing two steps. But the idea here is to show you actually that it works. So like keep everything arranged and click Q prompt. Once you click Q prompt, as you can see here, it is starting to work. Our execution is finished, uh, but in my case, I actually had to close a lot of apps because it hit the memory. Go to web UI and as you can see here, you have got the same Danush, who is a South Indian actor. And if you have seen, you would have seen. And again, you can see that it is not complete. It has to generate more. Even with two steps, it is this is what we have got. So we need to go with at least like four steps. Another important thing here is that you need to control the strength of the model. Right now, the strength of the LoRa is like one, which is very bad because the LoRa is like completely going to take over whatever prompt that you are giving from the base model. So or reducing the LoRa strength to something like seven or eight and then trying will have a lot of uh, better effect than actually going with let's say um, higher value of LoRa strength so one of the thing you can easily do is reduce the strength model and strength clip and then you can probably queue the prompt again it's done and if we open the web ui and we can go you can start seeing the green color coming in because now the LoRa which is only Danush is uh, going down in terms of strength and the model is uh, uh, proceeding with its own strength. You can play with different LoRa strength for you to understand. 
but this is generally how you would run flux locally in your computer there are different models like once it is done you can stop it and you can also see some other models available at different precision levels you can try those models as well which would be smaller than fp8 and this is basically how you would run lora with flux locally using your computer no cloud nothing all the models that you trained or the lora adapter that you trained using replicate based on the previous video can be used here but even if you do not have lora you can just use this to generate like basic images whatever you want to do with different sizes i hope this video was helpful to you in understanding how to run flux with lora locally if you have any question let me know in the comment section otherwise i'll give the pinocchio link in the youtube description for you to try it out in another video happy prompting